talk about medical emergencies. Medical emergencies is definitely something that you have to know for the board exam. And of course, for the real world as well, because the best way to prevent a medical emergency is to know more about all of the different types and to recognize the warning signs, but also to be prepared, such as having the essentials in your medical emergency kit, knowing what to do, who to call, all of that. So for the board exam, medical emergencies is a very large point in your textbook. So there's many pages, many, many chapters, and I like to narrow it down for what you have to know for the board exam. As with anything, you don't want to study too much, but you don't want to study not enough because you don't want to fail your medical emergencies section of the board exam. So I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of kind of what a little bit of a lecture might look like when we talk about topics in the Board Exam Prep Academy. So have a look if you are interested in being a member of the Board Exam Prep Academy. It includes full tutoring, full modules. You get modules, teachings, everything for the board exam. So making studying so much easier for you. So I'm just gonna go through a couple slides here just to give you guys an idea. So as an example, for medical emergencies, you need to have emergency kits and they need to constantly be updated, checked for things that are going to expire. I know the medical emergency kit that I have I actually have signed it up through a company so that they automatically send me, for example, the um, aspirin, because the expiry date, I believe, is two years, maybe even three years, but they automatically send that to me before it expires. So it's, it's always up to date. This is something that needs to be up to date. You don't want to be the one who goes to grab, I'm just going to pick one, epinephrine from the medical emergency kit and then go, uh-oh, there's none in there. Why did nobody tell me there's no uh-oh? You could, it could be a big issue, obviously, right? You need to have everything on hand to make it safe for you and for your patients. And keep in mind, you guys, a staff member could also go through a medical emergency. So I talk about kind of the more common ones in a little bit, but this is a good chart that basically explains the essentials that need to be in the emergency kit. It says why, and it says typically what the dose is. This may vary slightly, but at least you have some sort of idea. So as an example, you guys, we have oxygen, we have epinephrine, we have nitroglycerin, um, we have antihistamine, we have albuterol, we have aspirin. We have atropine. So go along the list and this kind of shows you what is needed. Now, as I'm reading through these names, if you're thinking, hmm, what is nitro used for again? Nitroglycerin, what is that? This is something you have to know for the board exam and I'm actually going to discuss in a little bit. So as an example, medical emergencies, you need to know they do happen. They're more common to happen when local anesthetic is being used um, because people have negative reactions to anesthetic. They might be nervous. Um, there's just many different reasons, right? But then you have to also think, okay, is it more likely someone's going to have a medical emergency during a teeth cleaning or, or during their tooth extraction appointment of five teeth? Which one is going to make them more nervous? Which one could there be potential problems? So you need to keep that in mind as well. And did you know that the most common one is syncope? And that is when a person actually faints or they're about to, or they're kind of saying to you like, uh oh, I don't feel very good. What's going on? I'm starting to see stars. I don't know about you guys, but this is unfortunately something that does happen to me when I get super nervous, um, when I have local anesthetic, it has happened to me in the past where um, as a child, I told the dental professional, um, I don't feel good, I'm starting to see stars and sure enough, I passed right out, right? So this is very, very common and you don't wanna be standing there like, oh my God, what do I do? So we go through all of that inside the course more specifically, but I'm going to talk about some key ones in a moment. Um, so some of the essentials, whoops, sorry guys, let me go back to oxygen here. So oxygen, this is something that is needed because basically even if a client says they're not feeling very well, they feel sick or they feel dizzy, well, oxygen is going to be the first thing that you're going to give them because even just giving them a little bit of oxygen might really help. 
Now, you know for your area, as an example, in my area in Ontario, the dental hygienist can't just give oxygen. If you're working at a dental office, the dental hygienist, the dental assistant has to get the dentist and the dentist is the one to administer oxygen. But you still have to know how everything is used because you don't wanna be the one who says, oh, the dentist was out of the building to get a coffee. I'm not supposed to touch, um, touch oxygen, so I'm not going to do it. You could risk somebody's life. So you need to know all of these things. When you guys take your CPR updates, this is something that you are typically taught on. Now, oxygen though is not used in hyperventilation, which it says right there. So that's the one medical emergency that you wouldn't use it for because they don't need more oxygen. They just literally need to relax. They need to relax. Um, so I talked a little bit about oxygen here, the different ways to use it. Um, the you know six to 10 liters per minute is appropriate for most adults. I go through this a little bit further, but just to give you guys an idea, more is definitely inside the course. And then epinephrine. So epinephrine, I'm sure you've heard of it. What if somebody is having an anaphylactic emergency reaction, an anaphylaxis, okay? Um, you try to get, let's say they're having an asthma attack, but nothing's helping. You're giving them the um, bronchodilator, they have passed out. Um, you're thinking, oh my goodness, what do I do? This is where the EpiPen, you know, epinephrine comes in handy. This is needed, okay? This is typically not just in an emergency kit. This will also be located in every single operatory because epinephrine needs to be done quickly. You can't be running to the lab room or wherever the emergency kit is located. Um, that has to be given like within a couple seconds, okay? But you also need to keep in mind if patients have the ischemic heart disease, you would not be giving this to them because it could do the opposite and be more life-threatening. So these things you have to know, you have to study for the board exam. And then nitroglycerin, this is the last one that I wanna talk about. This is the one where your patient is having chest pains. So quite often, if a patient has had a heart attack, um, but after their heart attack, they're still kind of having chest pains or they're just, more stressed than usual. They're they're very anxious and they say, like, I get constant, you know, pain in my chest. Am I having a heart attack? Am I not having a heart attack? What's happening? So they will be given this. So if a patient is, let's say, in your chair and they're having chest pains, they might not be having a heart attack, but they might be having an angina attack. So there is a difference. So nitroglycerin, this is either a tablet or a spray that is given under the tongue and it does work right away. If it doesn't work, let's say after five minutes, as I mentioned in the second part of the slide here, then you can assist the patient and give them another one, either another tablet or another spray because sometimes it does need two or even three. So if it still doesn't work and it's been five minutes, give them another spray or another tablet. But if that still doesn't work, it's been three times, they could be having a heart attack. You need to now go into other means. I, I always suggest to call 911 right away. It can't hurt because if after three times you're like, oh shoot, they might be having a heart attack. The patient's thinking, oh my goodness, I might be having a heart attack. My nitroglycerin isn't working. You want the ambulance there because obviously that's life threatening. But keep in mind, you guys, so certain things you have to know that has been um, that has been asked on the board exam before is um, nitroglycerin. It's different now, though. It depends on if it's a pill bottle or a spray and what kind of container it's it's in. But once it's used once or the pill bottle is opened, it might only last another three months. You also don't wanna give a patient expired nitroglycerin, right? Because then it might not work. So check the expiry date of your nitroglycerin. And the main thing as well to remember for this is under the tongue. You don't just spray it inside the mouth or you don't just have your patient swallow a pill. It needs to be given under the tongue.
Okay, so just a couple things here. Obviously, we didn't go through everything, but I hope this helps you guys. If you need more help to help um, learn, I teach for the board exam. I will leave the link for you guys down below. I do teach for the USA and Canada. So have a look, full tutoring, so you don't have to worry about what am I going to study? I tell you guys what to study every single week, if not every day, if you follow along. We also go through mock exams, case studies, so you're always learning something. So let me know, you guys, if you have any questions, and I will talk to you in the next one.